Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com. In this video, we are going to look at four examples of how to use the mod function of Excel. Now, this is a clever little function that produces the remainder after a number is divided by another number, a divisor. So I'm going to begin with a quick uh, intro of what the mod function is and how to use it and then we're going to see those four interesting examples of what it is capable of doing and how it may help you in your spreadsheets so quickly here we go quick intro well, i have some numbers in column b i have another number in c which is the one i'm going to divide the other one by so if i produce the mod function in d3 here it simply equals mod open bracket it asks me for the number and then the divisor so the number here is b3 and the divisor here is c3 and when i run this one it produces the answer of zero because when number eight is divided by two there are no remainders that goes in beautifully but if i copy that function down i can see that the second one has produced a remainder of one and the last one produces a remainder of 3 when 15 is divided by 6. So that's its basic, uh, sorry, its basic purpose in life. That's what it does. But there are so many different reasons that you may see a benefit to that. And hopefully by the end of this video, we're going to see some of those. So in the first example of the mod function, we're going to see how it can be used to extract the time from a cell that contains the date and time. So I've got one of those in A2, 6th for July 2017, and quarter past 10. Now maybe I want a column of just the times. I don't need the date involved. What well, a mod function can help with this. As you may already know, the date and time in Excel is stored as a number. So if I was to look at cell A2, in a general format, that's what it looks like, 42922.42708. Now, I'm just interested in the point for, for part, the time, the fractional part. So it stands to reason, knowing what the mod function can do, if I can get mod to divide that by one, that will separate that fractional part, the time. And then if I make it look like the time, then I have done my job. So let's get that done. Uh, mod function in cell B2 right now. The number will be the cell containing the date and time. And the divisor is just one. I'm going to type that in this time. Close bracket. I press enter. That will produce an answer for me in here. This quite ugly looking answer. But then just with a little bit of formatting we can get it to just show the time part of that answer. And there we have it. So the initial answer produced the date as well as part of that, but we were just interested in the time parts, so a little bit of formatting did that. But a mod function has extracted just that time. So it's different to only doing the formatting part, where we give the appearance of only the time, what we've done is just cut that number down and then formatted it for the appearance part. So that is example number one of what the mod function can do. Okay, so here is example number two, where we will see the mod function being used to prevent the entry of odd numbers in a range. So let's imagine that this is something that you need to do. Well, mod function can help because we know what mod does. It produces a remainder when a number is divided by a number. So it stands to reason that if we divide a number by two, if that goes equally, then it must be an even number for that to happen. So if we can put that as a test in a data validation rule, we can use that to prevent the entry of anything that doesn't meet that test. Uh, i.e. any odd numbers. 
We could flip that on its head and use it to prevent even as well. But in this example, it's about the odd numbers. I'm going to highlight a range. In this example, I'll just highlight A2 to A10. And I'll open up my data validation rules. I'm going to choose a custom option for what to allow so that I can write in a formula. And this is going to be a mod function. Now, let me write this in a cell first of all, actually, and I'll copy and paste it in there after so that we can see what I'm writing. Now, I'm going to put the mod function in and I'm going to divide the first cell of that range, A2, by the divisor of 2, close bracket, and I want to know if that is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, that is an even number and that is OK. They have to meet that condition. Anything else must be an odd number. So let me just come into here and take a copy of that formula. Let me highlight my range again. Data validation rules. Retracing my steps here. Paste it in. And click OK. Let me get rid of that in there. So now, in A2 to A10 range, if I type a 4... It's quite happy with these entries. If I type 12, it's okay. If I type number 7, now we have something that does not meet the data validation rule. That is an odd number. It does not divide equally by number 2. So that is our second example of how the mod function could be of benefit to you. OK, example number three now, and we're going to see how the mod function can help us to calculate the number of balls bowled in cricket overs. Now, this is something that I have done in my sports league tables course. So for anyone enrolled in that course will be familiar with this, maybe. But I've got a section on calculating cricket statistics and cricket data Uh to help us kind of rank in a, in a league table and in a, a kind of cricket tournament and stuff. And I wanted to bring that here because the mod function was involved in quite a similar way, really, to how we used it in the time in example number one. So for those who are not so familiar with cricket, in column B, this is how the number of overs is normally shown, which is the number of balls bowled. We say things like 6.2 overs, 9.4 overs. Um, so there are six balls to an over, and then the like, 0.4, in the case of 9.4, it's just four more balls. It was not a, four more balls. It was not a complete over. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the mod function to extract that fractional part again, the 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And we're going to put that in in addition to the integer part. So we're going to use a function called int here in addition to mod. So a bit of a double bubble here. We've got two functions that we're going to learn. Fantastic. Let's get this done. Cell C3 equals int and an opening bracket. I'm going to use the int function on cell B3 to extract just the integer portion, which for B3 is the 6. And I'm going to multiply that by 6 to find out how many balls in total were bowled. So 6 overs, 6 balls and over, 6 times 6, that is 36 balls. I'm then going to plus on that. Here is the mod function. In it comes. Mod function of B3, comma 1. I'm going to divide it by 1, just like the extracting time example. That will bring out the fractional part of that cell. Close bracket. And I'm going to multiply that by 10. Because in a case of, for example, 6.2 overs, that is 0.2, but that is two balls. So when I run the mod function, that would extract the answer as 0 0.2 which on its own is not very helpful. That's not really any better than what it was originally. So I'm then going to multiply it by 10 just to shift that 2 along the decimal places so it turns from 0 0.2 to 
to 2. Add the 2 on top of the 36. 38. Balls were bold. Copy it down. And now I have a formula that can calculate the total number of balls bowled from the way that cricket stats normally represent number of overs. And once again, example number three there, how the mod function was able to come in and help us achieve that. Came with a friend this time, going by the name of Int. Together, that task is done. Okay, welcome to the fourth and final example of the mod function. And we're going to use it this time to sum every nth number, every nth row. So I've got a pretend example on screen where I have these totals in every third row and I just want to add those from a column. This is what mod can help us do and we're going to need it this time with some product. A function a lot of you have probably heard me talk about before. It is one of, if not my favourite. So in cell B1, let me begin with some product. What a monster function this is. And if anyone watching this does not know about that, you want to check this function out. I'm going to put an opening bracket after it like we do with functions. And it's going to ask us for some arrays. Now, what I want to do is I want one of them to calculate whether I should be adding this number or not. Is it the third row? And then another one that will actually add up those numbers. Similar to how you may have done a sum if before. A condition and then a sum range is how you could think of this. Now, for the condition part, this is going in some parentheses here. It's going in some brackets. And I'm going to use the mod function. Who saw that coming? <laughs> That's what this video is about. Number and divisor is what it asks for. Now, the number is going to be the row number. I want to know, is it the third row? So I'm going to use a function called row, which can return the row of a reference. So if I use this row function, and if I highlight my range of values, let me make that absolute and close bracket. All that does at the moment for each row is return the number of it. So the first row is row three. The second row is row four in that range that I've asked it to do it for. But what I want is when that information comes back, I'm going to subtract two from it. Now I'm doing that. Because in my range, I say row one is actually row three of the spreadsheet. Because I don't start my, my data here, my table from row one. So I want to subtract two each time. So even when the row function comes in at the bottom here, there's, oh, this is row 11. I go, no, actually, that's the ninth row of my table. So I'm always taking two off it. In goes a comma. You can see I'm in the mod function here with the little box below. What is the divisor? It's three. I'm trying to use every third row. So, if I divide the row number by three, if that equals zero, it must be the third row. That's what I'm, that's the logic I'm using. So, get the first row number, subtract two, because you need to make allowances for my two blank ones at the top. Divide it by three, close bracket for mod if that equals zero then that is one that i want to add close bracket there is that conditional element of this formula multiply that answer so that's going to come back with one if that is true it comes back with one number one so i'm going to multiply that one by the values that meet that criteria. Whoops. Was he pressed a wrong shortcut there? I was trying to fix that. I shall uh, try that again. Here we go. Close bracket for that array. Close bracket for the sum product function. Black bracket on the end there. 
So, press enter, 2,850. 1,200 plus 1,000, and that's 650 on the end, 2,850. It has definitely done its job. It is a bit of a monster function. Some of you watching this may not be completely comfortable with that. I don't know. I have done this example in a separate video. Some of you may have even seen that video before. And because the mod function is involved, it's here because it's another example, yet another example of where the mod function could come in and it can help you out greatly at times with little tasks that you need to perform on your spreadsheets. It's a hidden gem that has a certain purpose but can be so versatile and be used in so many other scenarios. And we've demonstrated four of them here in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will find it useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. And come check us out at computergaga.com.